What do you think of the Jordan Love pick then? Well, I have a pretty strong feeling about that. Okay. And it's probably not one that a lot of people will share, but I think it also relates to Matt LaFleur and his background. He wants a timing rhythm pass game. Say what you want about Aaron Rodgers. He's super talented. We know that. He'll be a Hall of Famer. But Aaron Rodgers, over the last number of years, has evolved, or one could say devolved, into a player that plays a lot outside of structure and outside of rhythm. And when you get a chance to watch the coaching tape, as I do, and this is not an interpretation. This is what the tape tells you. He leaves a lot of throws on the field within the timing of the offense that are there to be thrown. And I guarantee that that bothers Matt LaFleur. And given the age of Rodgers, and, and who knows how long Rodgers can play, the age of Rodgers and, and Matt LaFleur clearly coming off last season, having probably pretty much carte blanche at this point, I think he's looking to say, hey, I'm going to start to put this offense together the way I want it to look. And while Rodgers is great, I'm a little frustrated with the way our offense plays out. And uh, that's just my personal opinion again, but I, I feel pretty strongly about that. So, okay, uh, I'm going to follow this strand here. You're saying that LaFleur had a year of evaluating Aaron Rodgers, and thus yep. we should view the Jordan Love pick through that, that prism? Is what you're saying? Yeah, think of it this way. Two years ago, Garoppolo got hurt in San Francisco, and Nick Mullins came in. And I'm not suggesting Nick Mullins is a Super Bowl quarterback, but he executed the offense at an NFL level, okay? Obviously, the 49ers didn't win a ton of games. They had other issues two years ago as well. Jimmy Garoppolo this year, who, by the way, not a lot of people think is a great quarterback by any means, came in and say what you want. That team got to the Super Bowl. So Jimmy Garoppolo was the quarterback of a Super Bowl team. So I think Matt LaFleur comes from that school. Let's get a quarterback who will be a ball distributor, will execute the offense as it's structured, does have second reaction ability when needed because it is needed at times in the NFL today for sure, which Jordan Love, by the way, does have. And let's get that kind of quarterback in here. In other words, when I work 18 hours a day and put my offense together, I would really like it executed that way. And while Aaron Rodgers is as good as there is and making certain kinds of plays, he leaves a lot of throws on the field that are there to be made, and that's very frustrating for a coach. And yet, if LaFleur is coming from the Kyle Shanahan system, Kyle Shanahan's team is the one that traded up to go get a receiver in the first round, not a new quarterback. You know, and I know that Garoppolo is a different. And, and it's funny because when they made that trade, that's the receiver I thought they would get, they would go for, because Brandon Ayuk is a great example of a guy that is a movement receiver. You want to get the ball to him on the move, and that's what the 49er offense is. No, no team used motion as much as the 49ers, which of course allows for free releases by receivers to get into their routes. No team threw the ball in the middle of the field between the numbers more than the Niners, and that's what Brandon Ayuk is. So they saw somebody that they. They really really wanted and they went and got him and it's uh, well of course we'll find out how it plays out but that style receiver fits the 49ers offense perfectly now I can only wonder if Aaron Rodgers is sitting at home right now on youtube.com slash Rich Eisen show watching us right now because you know why wouldn't you well he probably hates my guts no okay. Greg no it's not that he hates your guts but I, I'd be sitting there thinking you know I can I can do this off I can run pretty much any offense I know what what the forte is of the offense and what my forte is but he could still hit Brandon Ayuk on, on the run as anybody else, and he would prefer it. You know, he'd prefer to have somebody like right. that uh, as opposed to, as he's turning 36, somebody that that they, you know, the coaching staff covets. Like, why can't they covet somebody that would help Aaron Rodgers in his final, you know, maybe uh, you know extended window of opportunity in the spot where he's put his blood, sweat, and tears for another role? No, and I understand your point. And by the way, I'm sure more people feel that way than what I said. But quite honestly, I think the tape shows this. I've been talking about this uh, with Aaron Rodgers for a number of years because that's what the tape shows. And again, then you, have, you get caught up in always feeling like you have to qualify it because clearly Aaron Rodgers, from a talent perspective, is maybe as good as we've ever seen in the game. And the, some of the plays he makes, only Aaron Rodgers can make. Tape shows what, but, though? So yeah, what are you referring to about the tape that, 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 that plays into all this right now, Greg? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that... One of the things you always notice with, with the Aaron Rodgers, and this was true with McCarthy as well, and then McCarthy took all the abuse for it, uh, 
is that he just leaves some throws on the field that are there. And that's the way he plays. And then he makes special plays. So there's a balance there, and every coach will see it differently. And I think Matt LaFleur is in a position where he probably feels he has as much control as he'll ever have because he just got to the NFC Championship game as a rookie head coach. And he probably feels, hey, I now have a chance to sort of turn this this offense into what I want it to look like. So I guess let's finish this uh, subject by saying what you see on film and just uh, by supposing uh, what what and knowing coaches as well you do and knowing the the sport uh, and and inside uh, film rooms as well as you do, Greg Cosell. Um, what do you, what do you think the the time frame is on all this? I mean, where where probably a year. So you're saying, and you know, unless of course they get to the Super Bowl, I yeah. mean, that changes everything. Of course, you know, but I think if they. And who knows? Um, I don't. The thing I don't know is Aaron Rodgers' contract situation. I, I don't. He's got follow four years. He's got as, four years left. Some people. He's got four years left. Four. Oh, so I mean, theoretically, they would have to get rid of him. And who knows? He, I, I guess it will depend on this year. You know, you have a similar situation, a very odd situation in Philadelphia, which is kind of weird too, as to what they did. Um, you know, it's a little different because Carson Wentz has not finished the last three seasons, but, uh, you know, they just paid Carson Wentz a lot of money, and when you draft a quarterback in the second round, that's not a throwaway pick. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.